Hey guys, welcome to another History in Your Hand video. So this is going to be the last video that you guys see like this in here for a little while, but that's a good thing. That's because uh, on Thursday this week, I'm heading out uh, to France. I'm going there to Normandy, then I'm going to the Western Front, to the Somme. I'm going to film a load of content, so loads of videos coming right here on the channel, which should be really, really good. But today, this video is about the latter part of my trip. It's about my trip to the Western Front. I'm going back to the Somme. And I thought I would share with you something that I think was probably missing from my first trip to the Western Front, and that was proper preparation. So today, I'm going to share with you what I think are the five top tips to help you prepare for a trip to the Western Front, for you to get the most out of your trip, have the most fun, and learn the most whilst you're there. Hopefully it would also help you find some cool spots that maybe you wouldn't have found had you not had these five tips in advance. I'd probably done like one or maybe even two of these things before my first trip, but I certainly hadn't done all five. For this upcoming trip, I have thoroughly done all five of these things and it's helped me out loads and loads. Helped me prepare a lot for my videos, helped me get the best out of my own trip, but also hopefully helped me get the best out of the content that I create for all of you guys at the same time. So no messing around, let's get straight into tip number one, and that is to read. By that, I mean read specifically about the Western Front. Now, you might not be a reader. I am probably somewhat of a reader, but not a huge reader at all. So it might be that you prefer audio books, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Loads of great Western Front World War I books are available in audio books. One which I've listened to on an audiobook in the car when I'm out and about on my journeys over the course of the last few weeks. A fantastic book all about the Great War, and that is A World Undone by G.J. Meyer. I cannot recommend that one enough. You learn so much about it. You learn all about the details of kind of the lead up to the war and, and what caused it. Uh, so much about the different aspects of the war from the, the battles up by Ypres or, or Ypres um, down to the Somme and the Western Front and then further south from there, all the French areas by Verdun and so much about it. It's a really, really good book or audio book if you prefer. And I really recommend checking that one out before you go on a trip out to the Western front. Now feels like a good time to say I'm going to put links in the description below uh, to all of these so you can go and check them out uh, for yourself if you're interested in any of the kind of things that I suggest like books and stuff along the way. Another great book, and, and I've been physically reading the book book version of this, is The First Day on the Somme by Martin Middlebrook. I've been reading this one. The interesting thing about this is it follows the stories of some of these specific men that were out there on the first day of the Somme. It really enables you to kind of imagine what it is that those guys went through. So then when you visit some of the sites that are in this book, you really understand what some of these specific guys that were there went through. And that's really, really key. So I really recommend this book as well, The First Day on the Somme by Martin Middlebrook. Again, the, the link will be in the description below. That leads me nicely on to tip number two. I mentioned stories of the specific guys. Well, a huge part of the trips to the Western Front is going to include, or at least should certainly include, trips to some of the cemeteries that are out there. You cannot go far, especially on the Somme, without running into a cemetery. In some spots, you can literally see the next cemetery from the one you're stood in. In some places, like around Serre, for example, you can stand in one cemetery and see another two or three just from where you are stood. It really is a powerful experience. But what makes those trips to the cemeteries even more valuable is if you learn some of the stories about the guys who are there before. Now, this one leads me nicely onto another book. I actually have had this one for a while, um, but I was reminded by my friend Chris over at Vlogging Through History about this book, uh, and it made me dig it out of the cupboard. I've been having a look prior to this trip. Uh, this is a book uh, by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. It's called Battlefield Companion, Somme 1916. Now, the thing I love about this book is it includes things inside um, information, but also things like maps. You can see there goes like a double map in the front there. Uh, there's another piece in the back but in this book it includes lots of stories about specific guys who are in some of these cemeteries so when you go to some of the cemeteries you can read in advance or even take it with you and read whilst you're there about some of the stories of the guys who were there and what they did uh, during the course of the Battle of the Somme and that makes it really interesting for you to better stand uh, or, or sit uh, in a Commonwealth um, war grave uh, or by a Commonwealth war grave in a cemetery out there on 
on the Western Front and and be stood by a grave and know the story of that soldier and and look around you and and try to understand what it is they went through. That that makes the the trip really special. So I really recommend um, this book uh, and learning some of the stories about the guys who are out there before you go and visit those cemeteries. Really, really important. Okay, moving into tip number three, and we are sticking with information gathering, and that is to check out some podcasts. I had been into podcasts before. I'd listened to more kind of, I guess, like entertainment podcasts or photography video podcasts that I listened to. But over the course of the last year, I've been really getting into more kind of educational podcasts. And there's some great content out there if you like a podcast and you want to learn about the Western Front. Now, there's a few different ones that you, that you could look at, but I'm going to share with you my personal favourite one, and that is The Old Front Line. It's a podcast uh, that Paul Reed puts together. If you don't know Paul Reed, he is a fantastic World War I historian, uh, and his podcast has taught me so much. The thing I especially like about his is that he will include things like walks out during the Somme, uh, kind of almost audio descriptions of walks that you can then go and do for yourself when you're there. Um, and recently, He's done a couple where he's actually been on site doing the walk during the course of the podcast. And that's been great because it gives you something that you literally can take from his podcast. You can go and do the walk. You can even listen to the podcast whilst you're there. So you get the information about the places around you, what it is you're seeing and what happened there. Cannot recommend that podcast enough. And again, I'll stick a link for it in the description. Moving into tip number four, and that is Google Maps. Google Maps is your friend if you're going to make a visit to the Western Front. It's so, so useful. The way in which I use Google Maps the most when I'm researching the Western Front is to go into it and go to the satellite mode. So you can actually see um, kind of what the ground looks like. That really helps you to visualize it when you're going to go there and make your trip. The other great thing you can do with Google Maps is there are loads of numerous old world World War I trench maps that actually exist, the actual maps that the guys use during the war and during the Battle of the Somme, really valuable maps. And you can get those. And with some of them, you can almost kind of imagine an, an overlay onto Google Maps. Uh, before now, I have even um, taken them both as images, put them both into Photoshop and then reduced the opacity of the top layer. So you can literally see kind of where the trench is fitted over the modern day landscape. So Certainly what I've done before, and you guys might have seen it in my videos, is I take a Google map still, um, I take an old trench map, and from some of the kind of roads and stuff that are marked on there, I, I then map out where the front lines were. I really recommend that because if you then go out to the Western Front, you can use your map and you can literally work out, wow, I, I am stood right now on where that front line trench was, and it really helps you to imagine it. There are lots of other resources you can use to do that. I believe there are even some really modern ones that literally will kind of pinpoint and show you an overlay as you stand there. Um, I forget what that one's called. Maybe someone watching this will know and you can put it in the comments. There's lots of other ways of doing that, um, but that probably is the easiest um, and the most cost effective way of doing that. So I really recommend Google Maps. And last but certainly not least, number five in my top five tips to help you get the best from your trip to the Western Front, and that is to get onto YouTube. And I don't just mean my channel. I'm going to be making a lot more World War One content, which hopefully will help you research for your own trip. But there's lots of other channels out there as well. You know, Chris over at Vlogging Through History has done some great World War One content. I know JD, the History Underground, is going to be having loads of World War One content come up on his channel real soon. I know that Sander from Sander. UK history. He's got some World War One content. Uh, there are channels like the Great War channel. That one is great for loads of information. Battle Guide channel. That's fantastic. They do some real cool videos and they also do like a subscription thing through their website. We can get some really detailed tours of the Western Front and that's really good as well. I mentioned the Old Front Line podcast earlier. Well, there's going to be or there is, sorry, already a YouTube channel for that. Paul has a YouTube channel with some really good videos on there. There's actually a lot of content. I don't think there's enough World War One content and, and that's part of what I'm trying to do with my channel but there is plenty out there and loads of really good content so I really recommend going out there and checking that out. So look that just about rounds us off. I hope you found this useful. My top five tips to help you get the best from your trip to the Western Front. If you did do it do me a favour like the video make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you real soon on my videos from France showing you a load of new content. Thanks for watching.